In this video, I'm going to show you how to prepare your app for deploying it on the App Store and Play Store. First, let's upload the images for our splash screen and app icon. So let's come over to settings right here. And in this app assets, we have our splash image. That's that first screen you see when you open your app for the first time. Now you can upload an image from your computer, or if you have one in your assets already, you can just select it here. So I'm going to select this one with a transparent background right here because you can set the background color right here. So I'm just going to use my primary background color, but I want to shrink that down to, let's say, 100 pixels. That looks good. You've also got your image fit properties. I just have a little icon, so I don't need that. And you can set the duration for how long you're going to see this splash screen. It defaults to 1000 milliseconds. That is one second. You've also got your pre-loading color. That's right before the splash screen, normally around 500 milliseconds, so a half a second while the Flutter engine loads. And so you can set that color. I'm going to set it to the same color is this background right here. Okay, great. That's the splash screen. Next, your icon. That's just the icon that you're going to see on your iPhone or Android app to open your app. And I've already got it loaded up, so I'm just going to use that. Lastly, we've got our error image. So this is the image that will be used if at any point an image fails to load. So I've got an image right here. Beautiful. And let me just show you how that shows up. So if I just add in an image here and you scroll down, you've got this show error image on failure and I can just select that and that will be pulling from that image we just uploaded. OK, great. Next, let's generate our screenshots that we're going to need for the App Store and Play Store. And to do that, you can just come into here. Next, go into screenshot mode and you're going to want to select whichever pages you want to generate for those screenshots. So I'll select all three. That's great. And then normally you're going to have some parameters or dynamic data that you need to give real values to. So here I've got this word right here and I'm going to want to see a real word here. So I'm just going to do Thanksgiving backwards. Great. After you set all that dynamic data, then you can just go in here, select which screenshots you want to generate and generate. Great. Now you can just download them. Now, you're not going to use these in Flutterflow. You're going to upload these in App Store Connect and the Google Developer Console when we submit our app. Okay, two more things left. Let's jump back into Flutterflow. Next, you're going to want to deal with any errors or warnings that you've been putting off for a while. Now, you probably don't have errors because to run a test or run mode, you can't have any errors, but you probably do have some warnings. And here we have one and it has to do with our Firestore rules. So let's click on that and it'll bring us there. Now, this is telling us that our Firestore security rules may be too open. So let's go check out what's going on down. So down here in this collection for names, it tells us that the data in this collection is readable to all users and that to prevent unauthorized access, we should change it to tagged users so that only users who are tagged in the record can read it. OK, so what this is saying is that in this names collection, anyone can read the whole collection, not just the people to whom it's attached. But that's not what I want. I want it scoped just to the user who created to it or who's attached to it. So I'm going to come in here and select tag users and I'm going to connect it to that user reference. And similarly for the create function, just to the tag user. OK, let's save those changes and deploy our Firestore rules. All right, great. Now our warning's gone. Lastly, you want to check other rules you have, because often when you're developing an app, your rules will be very wide open. But when you launch your app, you want those scoped correctly. So if you're using Supabase, you want to check your RLS settings. And in Firebase, you probably set your settings to testing. This allows anyone to read and write for 30 days. So let's go change that. So I'm here in Firestore and let me come over to my rules. And you can see when we scroll to the bottom here, that when we set up Firestore, we had this pretty general rule that allowed reads or writes for 30 days when I first started this app. Now, it's outside of that 30 day window, so this doesn't really matter, but it's just good for cleanliness. So we're just going to change this to false and publish. Doing this is like adding a catch all rule to act as a safety net. By doing this, we ensure that any future collections or paths we might add won't be accidentally exposed without specific rules. Think of it as a default lock on any doors we haven't explicitly addressed, ensuring our database remains secure as it evolves. And that's it. That's how to prepare your app for deployment on the App Store and Play Store in Flutterflow.